Part 2 of Chapter 5 about separation. Here is a perfect separator. In this case, we have a mixture of B and C as feed stream. This feed stream is introduced to this perfect separator and then we have two output streams. In the first stream, what you have is only B component. So it means 100% purity B is obtained from the stream 1. At the same time, in the stream 2, you have only C component, indicating 100% purity of C. It is great! How can we obtain 100% something? This is our dream. So, we should think about the reality. Here is the real separator. In this case, we have five components in a feed stream, which is introduced into the real separator. B and C are key components, or I can say they are majority components. Let me check the amount of each component. The unit of this number is kilomole per hour. So, B is 50 kilomole per, kilo per hour, C, 47 kilomole per hour. The other non-key components, including A and D and E, or it can be said to be tiny amount components, have just one kilomole per hour for A and D and E, so minority components. Maybe they are impurities. This, this mixture is introduced into the separator and of course we have two different streams. Stream 1 or top stream or stream 2 or bottom stream. For both streams, you have found A, B, C, D, E, all components, unfortunately. And then let me check the amount of each stream. The most dominant component in the in the stream one is B. Here, 49 kilomole per hour. Very tiny amount of A and D and E. Of course, they are non-key components. More importantly, C. Actually, C was the majority component in feed, but however, in the stream one, we have uh, just a tiny amount of C component. It means we have successfully uh, separate the B component from C, even from the A and D and E, but the main point is B is separated from C. So, our target material in stream 1 is B component. Let's go to the second stream. Still, we have all of thing there, but C is dominant in the stream 2. A, B, D, E in a very tiny level or low level of amount. So, the point is that in this stream 2, you have found a high purity of C component, which is separated from another majority B component, with some still some um, impurities. This is the real situation for the separator. I mean, if you, uh, of course, you have a mixture of multiple components in the feed stream, but in any streams you cannot find 100% purity component. You should check which one is dominant for a specified stream.
that is the point for the for the real separators. Um, let me try to introduce some measures about the performance of separation or separators. I'll give you three measures. The first one is purity. Here uh, we have the uh, same picture introduced in the previous, previous slide and the same numbers. So let me just calculate the purity. In the stream one, the dominant component to our molecules was B. And our target uh, from the stream one is to obtain high purity B separated from another uh, majority component C. Of course, you do have some impurities. Still impurities are there. So, maybe you would think about the purity of B. Not C, not A, not D, and not E. Purity is fractional composition of B, of your interest, in the top stream, or stream 1. Then it is 49 for B in the top, per total amount of all species in the stream 1. So the result is 96%. That is to say, you have obtained 96% of B in the top stream. Let's go to the second uh, stream or bottom stream. Here, C is dominant and your target material from the bottom stream is component C. So, um, you are very interested in the purity of C in the bottom, not B in the bottom, right? <coughs> so, purity or fractional composition of C in the bottom is equal to 46 for C per total amount of all species. The summation of those numbers is going to 48. Point nine, so ninety-four, ninety-four percent C is obtained from the bottom flow or stream. That is the purity. That is to say, purity or fractional purity is more fraction of a specified component in a specified upstream. Therefore. Purity, or well, fractional purity, sometimes called product purity. Anyway, purity is considered as a stream composition specification because that is just more fraction. That is the first measure of your separation process. Let's go to the second measure. That is the recovery. So let me just calculate the recovery from the same example. Fractional F indicates fractional. Fractional recovery of species B in the top stream here is equal to the amount of B, 49, per the amount B in the feed stream, 50. So the result is 98%. You can read this equation like the B component in the feed stream, oh no, 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 98% of B component in the feed stream is recovered in the top stream. Okay? So f it means 49 per 50. So it is a little bit different from Purity. Purity is the information about the upstream, specified upstream. However, the recovery measure is the relationship between the uh, specified upstream with the feed stream. 
so output for per feed. But in, for the purity, output per total output. Let's go to the top, top stream for high purity C here. So you still you are interested in the component C in the case of stream 2 or bottom stream. So recovery. Fractional recovery of C component in the bottom stream is equal to 46 for C in the output 2 per, let's go to the feed stream, 47. Then which is going to 98%. I can say that 98% of C component in the feed stock or feed stream is recovered in the bottom stream or stream 2. Okay? Here's, uh, okay, so let me give you more explanation about the recovery. Recovery is the system performance specification to relate the output of the process unit to the input, input or feed stream. Here's one more question. Are you interested in on the B co no 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 C component in stream one, or B component component in stream two. My answer is practically you do not need to be interested in the those things. You know, in stream one, our target should go to the B component, and for the bottom stream, our target should go to the C component. Okay? Okay, this is the third measure or the last measure for separation. You know, purity and also recovery was specified, was defined uh, by a specified component, in this case B in this case C, and also in a specified stream, like a top stream or bottom stream. However, separation factor um, is about both B and C. So alpha of B and C is the separation factor symbol. I mean, Purity and recovery are merged into a single parameter, separation factor. So separa separation factor includes the information about the B and also information about the C. However, let me say this purity, you, will, you have used the information only about the B, not C. How about this one? Only about the C, not B. Okay, so purity and recovery are merged into the separation factor. So let me check the definition of separation factor while alpha, B, and C. The first term is the ratio of B to C in stream 1 because B is dominant and C is minority. So we are thinking about the selectivity between B and C. So the first term is about the stream one. So B to C is selectivity for your target. And then second term is going to the stream two. What kind of ratio could be used? Instead of B and C, for the stream two, you should use C to B. C to B. Why? Because in the stream 2, your target material is C, not B. So again, alpha, B, and C, or separation factor of B and C, is equal to B to C in stream 1 by C to B in stream 2. Let me calculate it. Okay, in the first stream, 
49 to 1 is a kind of selectivity, right? Beast target. So 49 to 1. How about the second stream? 46 to 1. 46 to 1. Because C is target. So the product of those two terms is going to 2254, which is the separation factor. Right now, you have three measures about the separator performance. Purity, recovery, and separation factor. Separation factor can be described by sometimes purity or sometimes recovery. Let me start with the original uh, equation about the separation factor of B and C. So I have said B to C and C to B in terms of flow rate for steady state continuous flow separators. Then this flow rate could be replaced by the composition or I can say purity. So everything is the same B to C in stream 1, B to C in C to stream 1, C to B in stream 2, C to B in stream 2, the same. However, in this equation, the molar okay, so flow rate is replaced by the molar composition or mass composition, or sometimes we call X as purity. Or also in the same way, the flow rate is replaced by fractional recovery. Everything is the same. B to C in stream one and C to B in stream 2. Okay, so everything is the same. Just in the first equation, you have used the N in the second, X in the third, FR, fractional recovery. One more thing. Fractional recovery of B in the stream 1 and in, in the stream 2, the summation of them should go to 1 because we have only two output streams and the all of the B is found in both both streams in a summation. So fractional recovery of B1 plus fractional recovery of B2 should go to 100 percent. The same for C component. C for stream 1 and stream 2 is going to 1. So, this equation is converted to this one. Okay, here's the simple example to calculate some purity or um, separation factor or um, the other thing is recovery. Here's the situation. Here's a separator feed stream, total feed stream, 100 gram per second, and composition of benzene in toluene. Our target is to obtain the high purity benzene and high purity toluene at each stream. So this is the distillation process. So the benzene could be found on the distillate, distillate or top stream, toluene bottom stream. Also, the values are given to you are uh, includes the amount of benzene and toluene in distillate. Then, first, let me calculate the distillation pu purity. It means more the, the composition of benzene in distillate, which is distillation purity, because Benzene is our target, not toluene. You don't need to think about the toluene purity. So, <coughs> very simple, 57 per total amount is going to 98% purity of component B or benzene, in this case, for distillate stream. Uh, we could build up two mass balance equation because in this process we have two compounds 
as the component of material balance equations, benzene and toluene. This material balance equation about the benzene feedstock, feed stream is equal to distillate plus bottom and in the feed you have 60 benzene and for distillate 57 so you could calculate the flow rate of benzene in the bottom. Let's go to the other mass balance equations. Feed is equal to distillate plus bottom and 40 is equal to 1.2 then you could calculate the value of the mass flow rate of toluene in bottom. Okay, then right now you have everything. So you could calculate the purity and fractional recovery of benzene in the distillate here and the same thing of toluene in the bottom and finally separation factor. Practice it. Example 5.8 Actually the same example, separating benzene and toluene but some conditions or restricts given to you are a little bit different from the previous example. In this case, all information about the feed stream uh, is given to you, like in previous example 5.7. And instead of um, the mass fraction for distillate, here one uh, mass fraction of benzene in distillate plus or purity or plus recovery value of the benzene was given to you. So let me analyze the f degree of freedom for um, the expecting this problem is well specified or under specified or over specified. Freedom to input information right? Uh, flow rate and fractional composition. But it is not 3 because 0 0.6 plus 0 0.4 is going to 1. So you should neglect one of them. So you have 2. Input. How about freedom? You should have two things. One for benzene, one for toluene in terms of mass flow rate. So two output and bottom you would have a two variable like in the distillate. So two input plus two output for distilla distillate and two output for bottoms. So totally six variables uh, are involved in this problem. Then let's try to find the restrict. Two input, right? and two output for purity and recovery and nothing there and we have two components of benzene and toluene so two mass balance equations so six minus six is going to zero and then you could calculate every composition for every output streams and also total amount total flow rate for distilla distillate and bottoms then finally you could calculate some purity or separation factor that's it example 5.9 fractional recovery in rate based separations membranes for kidney dialysis in example 5.6 you evaluated a uh, test apparatus for selecting membranes appropriate for kidney dialysis using as a design criteria 97% removal of urea in the plasma sample in 3 hours. This is the design criteria for urea removal 97% or more. It is a requirement when you uh, select the appropriate um, the dialysis membrane. Let's suppose you completed your experiment 
and identify the two membranes that you want to investigate further. The first membrane is flow through membranes. For these membranes, beta is 1.1 per hour. You have calculated this value. So what is the value of beta? What is the beta? Um, in the previous example 5.6, you have got this equation. That is to say, the flow rate of urea from the system to dialysis fluid is proportional to uh, the amount of urea in the system. Then the coefficient is beta. By using some basic experiments, we have calculated the number. Beta is equal to 1.1 per hour for the flow through membranes. While for diaflow membranes, another membrane, beta is 1.7 per hour. It means the permeability of diaflow membranes for urea is faster or larger than the flow through membranes. So from the viewpoint of urea remover, of course, the flow is better than the flow through membranes. Here is the second design goal. This design goal is to minimize loss of protein through the membrane. So, plasma or blood has two things in this situation. The first one is urea, we should remove it. And the other thing is protein. This is very useful or it is required to be to stay in the protein. Um, so a second design goal is to minimize loss of protein through the membrane because the protein is a good thing, not like urea. Specifically, at least 95% of the protein in the plasma should remain. This is the second criteria. You repeat the experiment, but measure protein concentration in the plasma sample. The flow rate of protein through the membrane decreases with the mass of protein in the, in the tank, like for urea. And you define a new parameter, beta of protein, beta subscript P, where the flux of protein from the tank into the dialysis fluid is proportional to the, the amount of protein inside of the tank or system or in plasma. The proportionality is beta with subscript P, P4 protein. From the data, you calculate that for flow through membranes, beta P is like that, whereas for diaflow membrane, beta P is equal to like that. It means uh, uh, the beta P value is larger, I mean the beta P value of diaflow is larger than the beta P for flow through. So from the viewpoint of protein, uh, perme the permeability of diaflow membrane is higher than that of flow through membranes. As a summary, diaflow membranes uh, have the higher permeability in terms of urea and also in terms of proteins than that of flow through membranes. Then, which membrane, flow through or diaflow, would you choose? Higher values of beta P is not good. However, higher values of beta is good. So keep, it, keep this kind of concept in mind, then let me solve this problem. 
Um, this is the schematic picture for the systems. So again, here is the tank. And inside of tank, we have a plasma or blood. Blood, blood have two important components. The first one is urea and the other thing is protein. And through the test membranes, sometimes diaflow, sometimes flow through, these proteins and urea is going through uh, the membrane and then finally going to the dialysis fluid. Then we could remove those things uh, with dialysis fluid. Then let me check this system. This is the semi-batch separator to separate urea and protein in plasma. System tank containing the plasma. And output product number one is urea enriched dialysis fluid. Output product number two is this part or system. That is the protein enriched plasma in tank. <clears throat> so at time equal to zero, you have protein and urea at their initial amount. After time t, um, some portion of P is moving to this area and urea is moving to this area. So here is the P1 and U1. And also at the exit of dialysis fluid, we have P2 and U2. This is the situation. Then let me solve the problem. Which membrane is better than the other? Uh, this is the same schematic picture from the previous slide. And from example 5.6, we have derived the equation, this equation. This equation is saying that the, the amount of urea in the system is the function of time. And in that case, we have used the beta. Beta is the characteristics of each membrane for urea. And in this problem, we have another example, very similar to the previous one. The first e equation was about the urea, and the second equation is about the protein. Then we would have the same, I mean similar, form of equations like that. Of course, in this equation, the, the amount of protein in the system or plasma is the function of time with the coefficient beta p. Then, let me think about the fractional recovery. The first one is fractional recovery of urea in stream 1 here. Then by using this recovery value, we could expect the how um, much of pro the, the urea is going to the dialysis fluid. So again, fractional recovery of urea in the stream 1 is 1 minus fractional recovery of urea in, in product 2 here. So 1 minus this one. And the definition of this fractional recovery is like that. The mass of urea in system per the mass of urea in system in the feedstock. This one is exponential minus beta t from this equation. So fractional recovery of urea 1 is equal to 1 minus exponential minus beta t. And then let me think about the protein. I mean fractional recovery of protein in product 2 in the plasma. So that is the, by definition, the mass of protein in system per mass of protein in 
each initial value or feedstock. So this ratio is found in this equation. So which is equal to exponential minus beta pt. Right now we have two equations. Fractional recovery of urea in stream 1 and fractional recovery of protein in product 2. Then by using those equations, let me calculate some values about the urea and about the protein. Let me st st uh, start with the less per permeable flow through membranes. So F, a fractional recovery of urea 1, is like that and then put the value of beta for flow through with 3 hour here because the design criteria was set up at 3 hour. So after 3 hour you would have the 0.963 value. How about the protein? There is the 0.953. It means 96.3% from this value, urea is removed from plasma. And 95.3% protein rema remains within the plasma. In the same way, for dia flow, 99.4% of urea is removed. A lot of urea were the most of urea is removed from the plasma. It's a good thing. However, 86% protein remains inside of plasma. Too much. Then let me compare between the flow through and dia flow. The urea remover uh, is larger. I mean, the urea remover uh, by using dia flow is larger than the flow through. At the same time, pro the protein remover by dia flow is larger than the flow through. So it is a bad thing. Anyway, it means permeability of urea and protein of dia flow is higher than that of flow through. And then let me compare those values with the design criteria. Design criteria says that after 3 hours, um, more than 97% urea should be removed. At the same time, more than 95% protein should remain inside of plasma. So, let's go to the flow through. This value, 96.3% urea, is smaller than 97%. So, it cannot be acceptable. I mean, rejected. 95.3% protein is larger than the 95%. It's a good thing. That is to say, half good, half bad for flow through. How about diaflow membrane? 99.4% urea removed, which is larger than 97% urea. So it is a good thing, I mean acceptable. And 86% protein is smaller than 95% protein in design criteria. It means too much protein is removed from plasma. It is not a good thing. So also for dia flow, half bad half good. It means both membranes do not meet both specifications. So if you don't, if you have any other choices, you should test another membranes. However, if you don't have any more choice about the membranes, then we should reconsider those two membranes again. Let me calculate the time for removing 97% urea first 
and then let me calculate the protein remain remaining protein amount in plasma here is flow through membrane and <clears throat> if the fractional recovery of urea in stream 1 is 97% which is the design criteria then how long does it take 3.2 hour 0 0.2 hour or 12 minute um, is longer than the design criteria which is 3 hour then at that time for 3.2 hour then fractional recovery of protein in product 2 is 95 percent this value is the design criteria therefore if 0 0.2 hour or 12 minute longer dialysis is allowed then flow through is a possible choice let's go to the dye flow in the same way it takes 2.1 hour for removing 97% urea <clears throat> too fast not bad I mean it is really good just 2.1 hour is enough for uh, removing 97% urea it is good then let me calculate the protein retention at this time 90% retention of protein is calculated it means too many too much protein is removed from the blood or plasma it is not good sometimes terribly bad so dia flow is too permeable to keep the appropriate level of protein in blood or plasma so i'd like to select flow through membrane for full hour dialysis uh, machine that's it for this example let me think about recycling in separation as you know recycling in chemical reactors is used to overcome low reactor conversion how about recycling in separators how does recycle affect recovery and purity in each stream for output okay here is the separator and of course a mixture of BC is introduced into separator and this separator have two streams the first stream is the product one where B is dominant and our key point should go to the B in the product one stream and in the second stream also you have a mixture B and C but in this case C is dominant with very small amount of B so product one stream is for B and product two stream is for C that is the separator and then I'd like to recycle the second stream so of course in this case we should have a mixer here so feed is introduced into the mixer and then going to the separator two outputs from separator here and one of them in this in this case the C dominant stream is going back to the mixer this is F feed stream and this is the M mixer stream from the mixer and this is the first stream for the product and this is the recycle stream uh, let me take a uh, whole process as the system like that and then you could recognize that we, we have only one single stream a uh, single feed stream and we have only one product stream based on mass balance equation it means B is just going to be without any change in the composition or flow rate also C should be same as the C between feed and product one it means there are no separation 
So please, please don't try uh, to recycle 100% for the separation. In that case, you cannot separate anything. So let me put a splitter here like that. And then this splitter <coughs> is splitting the separator streams into two output streams. A portion of the stream from separator, actually C dominant stream, is going to the mixer and also which is going to the product 2 stream. Then finally, we have two output and one input. The first one is B dominant and the second the second stream is C dominant. So it is working for separation. Then let me try to the, the amount of recycle stream by using or by controlling the splitter. Then maybe the amount of B and C in product 1 and the amount of B and C in product 2 would be changed. As the recycle stream increases, the flow rate of product 2 decreases. Of course, more, uh, the more amount of stream S is going to the mixer. So product 2 stream is going down. At the same time, product 1 become more like the feed in composition as the recycle stream increases. Let me go to the 100, the, the extreme, 100% recycle. Because I'm saying about the situation when you uh, increase the recycle stream. So for 100% recycle, it means this second situation is going to the first situation. It is not working. It means product one is going to the feed. So again, as the recycle stream increases, product one become more like the feed in the composition. At the extreme case for 100% recycling, product one is equal to feed. Let me check what happens for recovery and purity for the dominant species B in product one and also dominant dominant species C in product 2 stream. For B in stream 1, recovery goes up and purity goes down. Let me think about that. You know, we are recycling the C dominant stream from the separator. Then after recycling, um, the amount of B and also the amount of C would increase because some portion of BC is going back to the mixer, then going to the separator. Also, separator is trying to select B rather than C. So, um, more amount of B is found in product 1 when compared with the situation before recycling. So, recovery is going up. More amount of B could be recovered in the stream 1. How about purity? Also, after recycling, more amount of C is introduced. So, purity is going down. Again, recovery is going up and purity is going down, like a seesaw. They are, I mean, recovery and purity are always traded off. So for, uh, from the viewpoint, viewpoint of B component in the product 1 stream, recovery of B is going up and purity of B is going down as the recycle stream increases. So you could get a recovery, but you will have a loss about the purity. How about C in stream 2? For this species in this stream, 
the recovery is going down and period is going up. The trend for C in 2 is very opposite to the trend of B in 1. So again, recovery is going down and period is going up. Again, I have said our splitter will send some portion of C dominant stream into the mixer. So, and also separator is trying to select B for product one. Therefore, the the amount of B in product two is decreasing because split splitter is sending some amount of C is to sending the C into the mixer. So recovery of C is going down. How about the purity? More B is sent to the product one after recycling. So B is going down. So purity of C is going up. Again, as a summary, when you recycle the stream 2, where C is dominant, then the B dominant stream has recovery up and purity down. However, about the C, recovery is going down, but purity is going up. So you should select the fractional split value appropriate for your objective. Do you want to um, increase the recovery of B species? Or do you want to increase the purity of C species? Depending on your target, then you should control the splitter. Again, okay? sometimes recovery is going up, sometimes purity is going down. And also, the trends of B and C about the recovery and purity is opposite to each other. So you should select which one is more important uh, than the others. Okay, so in the previous slide, I have said about the effect of recovery, uh, the amount on the no, 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 no. Recycle. The effect of recycle amount on the recovery and purity. Sometimes going up, sometimes going down. Also, which is depending on the species in stream 1 and stream 2. So, in the previous slide, I have explained about that qualitatively. And then, here, I'd like to give you the equation about that quantitatively. Uh, as you know, fractional recovery and purity can be defined for the separator. And also, fractional recovery could be defined on the splitter. In this slide, I define overall recovery. And let's start. And also purity, again. So the overall, deco uh, no, no, overall recovery could be de described by single pass recovery. This is the real recovery for the separator. Single pass recovery and s fractional split here. So let's go to the equation. For the material balance equation about the B species here and also, we could use the definition of recovery and split. For example, fractional recovery of B species in product 1 can be defined by the, the B in product 1, like NB1, per NBM, right? This is the single pass recovery single pass fractional recovery for the separator. So this 
fractional recovery is to relate, it, re relate between the product one stream and this M stream. That is the localized uh, single pass fractional recovery. Also, our FRCS it means fractional recovery of C component in S here. So, like that. And the other thing is fractional split for the splitter. Um, the flow rate of B in the stream R recycle per the flow rate of B in S stream from separator. Right? This is also a single pass splitter. S single pass fractional split. Okay, right now we have three equations for mat material balance equations about B and the definition of recovery and split. Three equations here. Then by using those six equations, we could uh, describe the overall fractional recovery of B. What is the overall fractional recovery B by definition? The flow rate of B in product 1. Of course, this is the same as uh, that of single pass fractional recovery of B species in the stream 1. And let's go back to the overall fractional recovery of B. And the denominator is going to the feed flow rate of B in feed stream instead of the stream M. So let me compare between the single pass one and overall one. So the numerator is the same. However, the deno denominator is different. In the single pass one, we have used the M stream for the denominator. However, the overall fractional recovery of B species, we have used the uh, feed stream uh, having the B components. So that is the definition. By using those six equations, this the, the overall fractional recovery of B species is described by single pass recovery and split. And moreover, this is going to the, the other the fractional recovery. So again, the overall fractional recovery of B species can be described by the single pass, the fractional uh, recovery, and also fractional split. And how about the fractional recovery of C here? In the same way, you could obtain this equation. Also, this overall recovery it can be described by single pass recovery and split. Don't try to memorize. The, this equation. Anyway, this, this equation will explain about my explanation uh, on the effect of the recycling amount on recovery and more friction while purity. How about purity? Also, purity can be described by single pass recovery and single pass split and one more thing feed stream so by using those equations you could find this equation for example purity of B species in B dominant stream 1 is equal to the overall fractional recovery and overall fractional another overall fractional recovery plus feed stream. Also, this overall fractional recovery can be described by single pass recovery and split. About XC2, we could say the same thing. These equations are just for your information. Here is the example 
separation with recycle. Uh, the system is about separating sugar isomers. Two sugar isomers are available. The first one is glucose and the other thing is fructose. And fructose is uh, much valuable than the glucose. So if you have a mixture uh, of glucose plus fructose, your, your target material is fructose rather than gl glucose. So in this example, at the very first time, we will start with a single separator without any recycle. Then we'll go to the, the recycling separation. So here is our separator and uh, fructose and glucose are introduced into the separator. 40 kg per hour for fructose and 60 kg per hour of glucose to the separator. That is the mixture of fructose and glucose. Then, by using a separator, you will have the fructose enriched or fructose dominant product 1 and also product 2 have glucose enriched. Also, the fractional recovery of fructose in pro uh, product 1 was given to you and also fractional recovery of glucose in product 2 was given to you. Both values are 0 0.9 or 90%. That's the <coughs> first situation without any recycling. So let me check uh, the free, uh, degree of freedom. Then freedom, uh, fructose glucose for the input, so two input variables and two output variables for the product one and another two output products for product two stream. So six is the freedom. And how about restrict? Two inf input information are given to you and two system uh, information. What is that? Fractional recovery. So two recovery here. And we have two compounds which could, consider, which could be considered as the component of material balance equation. So two material balance equation could be available. So restrict 6. 6 minus 6 is going to 0 and then you can uh, solve this problem. It means you could obtain all values about the variables for product 1 and pr product 2. So let me assume that we have calculated everything. So right now we have all information about the single uh, separator uh, process. Okay, let me check the result. About the product one, that is the, that is fructose enriched and 80 per 86% of sugar is uh, fructose and total sugar flow rate like that. And how about the product two? Uh, glucose uh, occupy 93% of the total mass of sugar. So 86 and 93%. And then let me think about using recycle. Sometimes you could increase the purity of fructose in product one, or sometimes you could increase the recovery of fructose by using the recycling. Before going to the calculation, let me expect the trend. Okay, so this glucose enriched stream will be recycled to uh, back to the mixer. So um, then we'll check the purity and recovery of fructose in product one. So from the previous slide, I have explained about uh, the change in purity and the recovery of the main product stream when you have increased the recycle. So let me guess it. So when after you uh, have used the recycling of the second product two stream of glucose enriched one, then the, the recovery of fructose would increase. 
However, the purity of fructose would decrease. That is my expectation. Then let me try to calculate it. So here is the, the process with recycling. So in the previous slide, we have a single separator. However, in this case, I have used a sp splitter to send a portion of separ separator output into the mixer. So this is the recycling. And the target, uh, target stre stream for splitting uh, is the originally second stream, which is glucose enriched. Of course, splitter will send a portion of that stream is going to outside. That is the new part two stream. Of course, still, which is a uh, glucose enriched. That is the process I'd like to calculate about that. Then let me check the degree of freedom. Uh, two variable, two variable. A I mean. For each stream, we should have two variables. So two. And how many streams are there? So feed and from the mixer and from the separator and from uh, for recycling and product one and product two. Total uh, number of streams are six. So freedom is 12. 12 variables are available in this problem. How about restrict two input and um, the two parameters for separator? What is that? Fractional recovery was given to you, 90%. So two fractional recovery here for this stream and the other stream. So two separator and one splitter. I mean, fractional split. Uh, would be given to you, or sometimes you could use the fractional split as the variable. Anyway, we, we could get some values about that. So one split plus mass balance equations. We have two components, right? And three units. So totally six mass balance equations are given to you. Therefore, Freedom 12, restricted 11, so degree of freedom is going to 1. It means one more restrict you can make. The choice could be the purity of fructose in stream 1. So after fix XF1, then you could solve the problem. Or sometimes um, you could check the values as a function of other parameters, like that. Then, um, as, you, as you expected, we have two input restrict and six mass balance equation and two separate performance. And the other thing is one uh, splitter performance. Okay, everything is there. And also, what we have is the equations about the overall recovery of fructose and overall recovery of glucose and also uh, the purity of fraction uh, no 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 purity of fructose in stream one can be calculated by the overall recovery here with overall recovery of glucose plus some feed stream. Okay, then maybe we could plot some graphs because uh, I want to the effect of fractional split on purity, sometimes on overall recovery. So x-axis is the fractional split and y-axis is overall recovery for the fructose in product one because fructose in product one is our concern. I don't need to think about the glucose in pro product two or fructose in product two, even uh, glucose in product one. <coughs> so let me check recovery about that. 
but in this case overall recovery because overall recovery is more important than the single pass recovery actually single pass recovery was given to, to you at a fixed number so fractional recovery is increasing with the fractional split i have said right so recovery goes up with recycles because more amount of um, the fructose are introduced into the separator however purity is going down like that because more amount of glucose is also introduced into the separator so we have used this equation from the previous slide so that's it but one more thing again uh, you could increase the recovery of some molecules you are interested in by using recycling however um, that higher recovery is sacrifice sacri sacrificing the purity that's it for recycling